Hey you guys, I have been getting a lot of questions lately revolving around Swift 3 and the currently under development Perfect 2. So today I thought I would go over a video with you guys because uh, the development snapshots are a little more stable, development's not changing at such a rapid pace, and the syntax isn't changing every time. So now I know there's a lot of interest revolving around it and uh, I'm going to help you guys get set up. So. A couple of things we'll need. Um, the first we're going to need is the, I just have GitHub um, perfectly soft open up here and I'm going to go into the perfect template project on GitHub. I'm just going to hit that. I'm going to grab the, uh, the URL to clone that. It's You can use HTTPS if you're not set up with SSH on GitHub. If you are, I am, I'm going to use SSH. So I'm just going to git clone and I am going to clone that. And then I'm going to cd into perfect template. All right, so, so cat about Swift version. All right, so this is using the 818a tool chain, um, env local. I'm just going to switch to the 823 because by the time you see this video, it's probably already going to be there anyways, and it doesn't have a com problem compiling on either. So I'm just going to use the new one. Um, one of the first things you do need for this project is Swift env. You can go over to GitHub forward slash Kyle F forward slash Swift ENV. This is Kyle Fuller's GitHub. He uh, he has Swift ENV. It's the version manager where you can install development snapshots. Um, whoops, no. It's GitHub, Apple, Swift, releases. Um, they tag development snapshots occasionally. Um, how you work with those is just once Swift ENV is installed, you just tell it what to install. It'll go grab it for you. You don't need the Swift dash on the beginning, just the last part. Um, and then the command Swift ENV local just tells this project to build with this Swift compiler, essentially, this snapshot of the Swift compiler. And you can also use Swift ENV global, which will tell every project to use by default if you haven't set a local. Um, it's a pretty awesome project. It's definitely um, worth having, and the installation instructions are right here in the README if you don't have it. Pay attention to the configure environment because if you don't do this for your shell or shells, whichever shell you're using or combination of shells you're using, and make sure that this eval is the last line in your shell's profile, then you're going to have problems with that actually working. I've had several where uh, people come to me and not necessarily complain, but say, hey, this isn't working, and uh, that's often the case. So once you have all that set up, you'll also need Xcode um, 8, and we'll get into some of the stuff on that. Make sure that um, once you've downloaded the Xcode beta and you've set up Xcode 8, I'm on beta 6, that you set your locations to Xcode 8, because that's going to set the command line tools. If you know what you're doing in terminal, you can um, sudo uh, the Xcode select and you just pick the Xcode 8 um, command line tools. Uh, the easiest way to do it is to go into your settings, click locations, and just hit Xcode 8. It'll ask you for your password, and it'll set you right up. Um, you can also go under components. You'll actually see all the installed tool chains, or they've got this nice new tool chain menu. Um, I've selected 823 because that's what I'm using for my projects right now. And uh, All right, so let's get this going. All right, so we've got our project here, and of course, the unfortunately, the first thing we're going to need to do is build it. So we're just going to run Swift build. And that's going to go out, and it's going to take a look at the package.swift file in this repository, and it's going to download this as a dependency and all of its dependency and all of its dependencies dependencies until it's got everything it needs so if you have the 5.9 toolchain installed this basically always comes up and you can ignore it um, it's just a consequence of its existence you really don't need that unless you build projects that still require it so as you can see, it's going out and cloning all of these dependencies. Now, one I will mention is Perfect now has its own version of OpenSSL, and this has to do with 
changes that homebrews made in linking and refusing to link and a lot of other things to get it to work with switch package managers. So as you see, OpenSSL has to compile, which does actually take uh, a couple of minutes. It's um, a necessary evil at this point in time. And yes, when you are rebuilding, you'll have to do that again. So you're looking at two minutes in between compile times before you can test your changes until we at least get Xcode up and running, which I will show you how to do after we get it up and running on the command line. So you'll have to bear with me for a minute. Um, it's going to take, like I said, a minute to get go through all of these and build everything, and you'll see some of the other modules start to come into here, and eventually it'll say, linking open SSL, and that's when you know you're, you're through the, the bulk of this and almost done. So while this is going... While this is building, I will go ahead and uh, harp on Swift ENV again and, and mention that um, I definitely think it's necessary to harp on this again, that you, when you do go to Swift ENV and you follow the install instructions, make sure you set up your uh, your shell profiles correctly and that you have your eval lines. All right, so while that's still building over here, I'll go, uh, whoops. Let me go back into the template project. Um, if you're familiar with Swift Package Manager, great. Your manifest is here and your sources are here. If you're not, um, this just is the Swift ENV version file local. It specifies the tool chain. When I hit local, it updated for a different version. There's a Docker file for building. Um, the git ignore, the license, this is readme, it's all standard stuff. In the sources, you'll now see an arguments.swift. If you're not used to working with um, the beta builds of Perfect 2 for Swift Package Manager, um, this basically just adds support for adding uh, flags onto the command line when you're running it. And you can use things like dash dash port to change the port on the fly when you're starting the program rather than changing it in the source and recompiling. If you go into main.swift, You'll see the standard imports now are perfect lime, HTTP, and HTTP server. Create a server. You add a route for, you, you're just, you know, getting the, the default directory, some um, index. It's just going to return some HTML for hello world. Add the routes to the server. Set the port. Set the document route to web root. Uh, configure server basically just adds the command line arguments or makes those work, and then um, it's just doing a do try catch for starting the server and catching any errors. So it's a fairly simple program, and once we go over here, you'll be able to see uh, dot .build debug perfect template should run that. We'll see it starting on 0, 0, 0, 0, 81, 81. Here we go. Hello world, hello world. Super. So if you want to make changes to this program, um, LSLA is a normal command. I have that mapped to LA because it's just faster. Um, if you uh, go into your sources and you can, uh, you could open a text that are like Adam or Sublime or whatever, and you could edit your main.swift or do whatever you want to do in it, but most people prefer working in Xcode. So I'm just going to clean this up here and we'll start building an Xcode project. Now this should go away. Back to Swift package generate Xcode project. And if you do, um, actually, before I get into that too far, if you do want to change anything in a text editor, uh, you swift build clean, and then after that runs, you run swift build. And really all swift build clean does is it um, it removes this dot build directory so that uh, all the, the binaries are gone and that it has to rebuild everything from scratch. And then swift build just runs the the project through the Swift compiler and does that. Um, incremental builds in Swift Package Manager don't happen yet, so you can't just run Swift build again. You won't see any of your changes. You have to do a clean build and run it again. Now, if you want to work in Xcode, you need Swift Package Generate Xcode Proj. And that's going to make an Xcode project out of this file. And I'm going to open that. Now, there are several things we'll want to do. Namely, make sure an Xcode 8 opens and your command line tools are Xcode 8. Make sure, if you go to the Xcode menu, that your tool chain is on 8.23a or 8.18a 
or whatever you're using. Um, 18 and 23 both compile with this project, so if you leave it default, don't change it like I do, that's fine, or if it's already changed by the time you clone it to 23, just make sure if you run cat.swift version that whatever's in there is what you have selected here. Next, we're gonna switch over to the executable. Once you've got the executable up, we are going to edit the scheme to use a custom working directory. I'm just gonna go in, in my developer folder here. I have cloned perfect template, so I've got that up and we're gonna close that. Right, we're just telling it to use that. I'm gonna click on the project next. I'm gonna select the actual project. Go into build settings, search for library search. So we're looking for the library search paths. And because it builds its own version of C OpenSSL, we just need to include the pro, whoops, project dear setting recursively so that it ends up pulling the project directory in so that when it's looking for um, the, the libraries to use in those headers, it actually finds them. Now you'll see we've got our perfect template and our main and everything looks great. So indexing will take a while because um, uh, again, of all those open SSLs, but we should be able to hit command R and run this and you'll see it fly through that compile again. Should look pretty familiar at this point. Uh, I find that Xcode at least feels like it's going a little bit faster than the command line. We should have you up and running in no time here. As my emails and messages pile up in the bottom. So we're about halfway there now. Uh, again, this is a, a necessary evil at this point in time during development. It just kind of, it's one of those things you have to deal with and let it have a long build time. Eventually, I'm sure something or someone will solve that, but in its current state, we need that. All right. And once this has built once, you, you should have... Um, access to autocomplete and all that fun stuff, which makes working in Xcode a little bit easier. So there's our build. I'm gonna pull up our console, I'm sure. There we go. And we, it looks like we've started. I really need the left. Super, hello world. We can change this in the body to hello perfect. And we'll change the title to be hello perfect. We'll save that, and I'm just going to hit Command R to run again. Now that will actually, whoops, gotta wait for it to come up there. Hello Perfect and Hello Perfect. So now you're developing in Swift 3, in Perfect 2, in Xcode. Um, if you have any questions, um, you can find everyone on the Perfect Gitter channel. You can find everybody on the Perfect, uh, the new Perfect Slack channel. Um, everybody's real helpful here. You can find me, uh, Ryan Collins, on Twitter at R-Y-M-C-O-L. That's at Ryan Call. And uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you know where to find us. And have a wonderful day.